The Righteousness and Loss of Job In this story, we dive into the poetic story of Job. We learn about the cosmic dialogue between God and the enemy. God boasts of the righteousness of a man named Job. Job was a man of pure heart and noble intention. He walked blameless before God and his family. His character would soon be tested to prove to all mankind that it is possible to persevere despite gargantuan loss. Inspired by the book of Job. Hello, I'm Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. Previously, we heard about the final days of Joshua's life and how God blessed Israel with peace and many victories in battle and gave them an ever-expanding share of the land that God had promised, the land of Cana, the promised land. Today, we dive into the story of Job. The story of Job is one of God's faithfulness, even in the face of the greatest adversity imaginable. As we begin today, we'll hear the dialogue between God and the accuser, Satan, who challenges God to allow Job to be tested to see if he will remain true and righteous and faithful. The message of Job has so much to teach us about the sovereignty of God and his ability to be steadfast and true no matter what pain comes our way. So, let's begin with today's reading. The ancient land of Uz was a blossoming and blessed country. Before the ages of kings and conquests, a man named Job dwelled in the land peacefully with his family. Job was a man of noble character and pure heart. He was wise in all his dealings and raised his family with love, affection, and devotion. He lived in Uz with his wife, seven sons, and three daughters. Together with his servants they cared for his seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred oxen, and five hundred donkeys. Each night the family would hold a feast and laugh with each other in joy. Job was a truly blessed man, and made sacrifices for his family every morning. Job would continually seek God in the cool of the morning, and the two of them were close in all his ways. In a different form of space and time near the shining presence of the Almighty, the accuser, Satan, appeared before the Lord. From where have you come? God asked. The two did not stand as equals. Satan was allowed to live, but only under the permission of God. I have traveled to and fro on the earth, seeking who may be led astray, Satan said. His tone was slithery, and his countenance was bitter. He looked at God with equal reverence and hatred. The Lord spoke, saying, Have you seen my servant Job? There is none like him. He fears me, turns away from evil, and walks blamelessly before his peers. God's voice was elated with pride as he spoke of his beloved Job. It made Satan writhe where he stood. You coddle Job like an infant, Satan snapped. There is a hedge of protection over him miles wide. You blessed his work, his possessions, and his family. Take it away from him, and I promise he will curse you. God's confidence in Job was unwavering. Do what you will to him. I give you permission. Only do not harm him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord to descend upon Job like a whirlwind. The day was drawing to a close, and the sun was setting over the land of Uz. The warm summer breeze trickled in through the home of Job's oldest son. The entire family was eating together, enjoying music and laughter. The revelry continued, and the sound of instruments and conversation drown out the noise of plunder happening a few hundred yards away. In Job's fields, a neighboring village swooped in and raided the livestock and killed the servants with the edge of their swords. The bellows of stolen livestock and swords being driven through servants' chests were drowned out by Job's laughter. A servant came to tell Job of all that was taking place, so Job left with his servant to go to the barn. As they were running, another servant came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven. Your sheep and servants were consumed in the pasture by a great wildfire. Job's mind was beginning to unravel. He began to run towards the pastures where he heard a clamoring in the distance. My Lord, one of his servants yelled, 
The servant was running from the western edge of Job's property. He fell at Job's feet out of breath, saying, The Chaldeans are here. They have made a raid on your camels. I am the only servant to survive. What is happening? Job thought to himself. He paused for a moment, and the eastern winds began to rage. Job could barely stand upright. The wind howled violently, and Job and his servants ducked for cover under a crack in the hill near the pastures. Job heard a mighty crash in the distance, followed by screaming. Then, just as quickly as the wind had come, it vanished. Job could hear one single faint scream in the distance. He and his servants looked up from under the rocks to see another servant running towards them. Job knew in his heart what the man was going to say. Job fell to his knees as the servant grew closer. Everything slowed down for a moment. The servant's voice was muffled in his ear. Lord! Job did not respond. My Lord! The servant yelled again. Job looked up. A great wind just came in from the wilderness. It must have toppled a beam in your son's house. I am sorry, but they are all gone. Job did not respond to his servant. Instead, he walked away back towards his home. He walked a few hundred yards, then fell onto his knees again. Job's tears released like a dam breaking. He yelled, tore his shirt, and drove his face into the ground. Job was weeping, but there was no bitterness behind his tears. His face lifted towards heaven as he said, I came to this world with nothing. Naked, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and now the Lord has taken away. Blessed be your mighty name, O God. Job stretched his arms to heaven. His tears streamed down his face as he praised God. Job's wife watched him from a distance from their home, stewing in grief and bitterness. She hated him for his joy. Job's joy was complete in God. However, he was not without grief. Job felt the loss deeply, and his heart was shattered into millions of pieces. The next day, Job stood over the wreckage of his children. Ash from the burnt fields made the sky dark. His family, riches, and property was destroyed. Dried tears and dirt caked his face as he stared at his dead children. Job resolved in his heart to not blame God, rather press into him. His faith would be tested even further. We open our reading today in God's Word in a place called Us, and we meet a man by the name of Job. He is the patriarch of a great and wealthy family, and he has lived righteously before the Lord, and God has blessed him immensely. The riches and blessings upon his life was a clear sign of God's favor and blessing upon him. Job was a devoted husband, a loving father, and a godly leader in his family and in the community. He led his family in life and in the worship of God, offering sacrifices as a priest for his own family. His devoutness and closeness to God was visible to all. He knew God well, and yes, God knew him by name. So here's the story. It happened. One day, Satan, the accuser of the brothers, appears before God. We often think of Satan as being banished from God's presence, but God may allow Satan to come near him at his own request. We also know that Satan is not banished to hell in this epoch of history, but rather he is alive and well and living on planet Earth. As Satan and God converse, God brings up Job, his servant, his righteous service, a man that fears God and turns away from evil. But Satan, the accuser, claims that Job only fears God because God has blessed him. God has given him everything, and that's why he loves God. He is so bold, Satan is, to challenge God, saying, if you took everything away from him, he would curse God. God knows that Job's faithfulness is real, so he gives Satan permission to do as he will with Job. There was one condition, and that he leave the man himself alone. But beyond that, he could attack Job. Satan leaves intent on embarrassing God and destroying his most favorite servant. Job has no idea what is about to happen. And then, out of nowhere it seems, Job's world crumbles beneath his feet. Servants run to Job from every corner of his property and speak of one tragedy after another. His livestock, 
his servants, property, all destroyed or taken away. Then the greatest tragedy of all comes. His own children, all ten of them, have died. Job responds, like you and me, with an outward emotional display of intense grief. He tears at his clothing. He shaves his head. He is broken. A man who seemingly has lost nearly everything in the span of one single terrible day. But then I want you to see what Job says in chapter 1 of the book of Job, verses 20 and 21. He fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a testimony. Whatever happens, blessed be the name of the Lord. The story of Job is a difficult one to understand at times, but in the midst of his tragedy, he exhibited the most extreme kind of faith. It's the testimony of a man who knew that God is sovereign over all things and can be trusted no matter what. Job's first response was one of intense grief and sadness, and yet in the midst of all the tears, he worshiped God. He looked to God for strength. God had given him everything he had. God could choose to take it away, and he has. But in the midst of it, he praised God. It shows that Job's love for God wasn't dependent upon the things that he had, his possessions, or his blessings. But his love for God, his faith in God, was true and steadfast. Dear God, may we, like Job, worship you in every circumstance of life. Through the tears of tragedy or through the joys of success, we know that you are worthy of all praise and all honor and all blessing. We can say, no matter what we face, blessed be the name of the Lord. And it is in this name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening today to the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas, pastor of Prestonwood Baptist Church. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. And if you enjoy this podcast, share it with others, people that you love and care about, people who want to know the Bible, help them understand the Bible as well. This podcast can make a huge difference in someone's life. If you want more resources on how to tap into the power of Jesus Christ in your life, then be sure to visit jackgraham.org. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.